Mark Laporte. Um, we're having a meeting uh, to talk about uh, Rubik XML uh, and Wikisuite and TikiWiki CMS groupware. Uh, we've invited a bunch of people. We decided to record it. Everybody's okay with that. The idea, basically, the, the goal of this meeting is an introduction. Basically, we have uh, different communities that are used to working together. We've got a lot of people interested in machine learning. And we just want to get together for everybody to start knowing uh, each other, discovering uh, about each other, and then see where, where that goes. It's good to start. So hi, everyone. My name is Roberto. Um, I'm originally from Brazil. I've been living in Portugal for the last three years. And uh, I've been a PHP developer for the last 20 years and been with Tiki for the last three years. Um, and it's three, 311 for me. Uh, I'm new to machine learning, but I know it's a promising field. So my name's Andrew. Uh, first of all, I'm really excited to, to even be here right now. This is the first uh, first time we've had anybody interested in, in using uh, my library for uh, well, not the first time anybody's in, been interested, but enough enough interest to have a a, a video meeting about it. Um, so I think that's really cool. But uh, I'm from Chicago. Um, what time is it? Wow, it's nine eleven. Hi, I'm I'm George. Um, I'm from Montreal. I'm born and raised in Montreal. It's ten twelve uh, in Canada. Ten twelve a.m. Uh, right now, and I'm interested in Rubik's ML, ML just in general uh, because I just thought, had the chance to start my first uh, algo trading uh, firm and I'm trying to develop uh, trading algorithms to with ML. Uh, actually, I'm living in Zimbabwe, uh, South of Africa. So, I've been uh, starting with machine learning is uh, one year ago. And recently, I have just like, graduated for, for searching of deep learning with uh, actually i'm using just tensor tensorflow python so i wanted just to see what uh, is going on with rubik's with php but i never done machine learning with php oh, okay um i'm in in bulgaria in eastern europe that's uh uh three hours after gm uh, greenwich meridian <laughs> um yeah um we are working uh, on uh, several projects with, with Tiki codebase and uh, actually just starting with machine learning. I'm Jean-Marc. I'm in France. Uh, it's 4 p.m. here. Um, I'm, uh, I've been working with Tiki for a lot of years and open source software for even longer. Hello, uh, my name's Johnny. I'm in London, England. It's uh, 18 minutes past three. Um, I work on Tiki pretty well exclusively. Um, I'm mainly front end developer. One minute. Thanks. I'm Kevin. I'm from Zero C Congo. And uh, then we have uh, 1521. And uh, my uh, speciality is uh, full stack develop full stack development with PHP. Okay, so my name is Magia, and I am from Pakistan. It's currently seven twenty in the evening here. Um, I'm into machine learning. I started machine learning around almost a year, but I mostly did work in Python and TensorFlow. And like recently, I started machine learning with PHP. And so far, it's been a good, elucidating experience so far. Uh, my name is Rich Davis. Uh, I'm a back-end web developer uh, for a little startup in Dallas, Texas. It's uh, 9.30 AM for me. I'll, I'll take more questions than, than anything else. I, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll kind of give you the uh, the stock answer. Why did you create this library? Why did you choose PHP? And what was the context of, uh, of RubikSML? And, and I guess um, you know I'll just kind of take some questions after that. If you guys had any. Um, I'd be happy to help you out with any of your uh, your projects and whatnot. But um, you know, I get the question a lot. You know, why why PHP? Um, we have all these tools in in Python and in R, and and everything seems to be working well. You know, why why go ahead and and, uh, and make a library for another language like PHP? 
And uh, well, for one, I, I, I love PHP. Um, I started PHP about 15 years ago and, and I've built um, pretty much everything I've, I've ever built with PHP. So, so there was that. Um, but I started using uh, PHP ML about two and a half years ago. And, and the first time I, I trained a, a working model was sort of like this flashbulb moment for me. Um, I, I had this sense of um, like there was something transcendental going on there. You know, there was some some uh, so, some missing some missing uh, pieces, some magic that was going on there, and, and uh, uh, that that feeling kind of stuck with me. Um, so I started implementing algorithms myself and and seeing if uh, you know indeed it wasn't a good idea to or or, or it was a good idea maybe to uh, to implement them in in PHP and. I mainly did it as a learning experiment, uh, you know, just to, to get familiar with with the uh, the algorithms themselves. But then more people started using it, and so I, I started to see the utility. Um, I posted on I think it was like Hacker News. Reddit Reddit seems to be pretty receptive. Reddit, uh, if you guys are familiar with the uh, the PHP subreddit, um, I'm on there sometimes posting about uh, about the library, and um, you know we we seem to get uh, you know the the PHP developers seem to be you know, pretty excited about it. And, um, but I, I posted it on some other websites like Hacker News and, and I got, a, I was met with a lot of doubt. And so one of the questions in my mind was, well, can we do this? Uh, you know, is it, from an engineering standpoint, is this a problem that we can solve? Um, and, you know, as I, as I kept working and, and working, uh, I, I, you know, the, the answer to that question became more clear that indeed, yes, you can do machine learning and PHP, all the tools are there. Uh, our ecosystem is a, is pretty far behind Python or, or R, for example. But um, you know the the engineering challenges uh, can be solved with the language itself. So so that was very reassuring. Um, and then I like I said, like I said, you know, uh, more people started using it, and and here we are today. We have uh, what's it? I, I count at least twelve people here, um, and I think that's fantastic. You know, if there's a way that we can take this body of software and and come together as a community to um, you know, solve these really big problems, uh, you know, because one of the, the great things about machine learning is, um, you know, you, like I said, it's it, for me, it was that transcendental moment. It's almost as if we're, we're almost kind of flipping programming on its head, uh, where before we would take our body of knowledge and, and sort of instill that in the programs that we create. Uh, this is a little different. What we're doing is with machine learning is we're saying, well, we don't Necessarily have that body of knowledge ourselves, but we have a, a data set. We have a good data set that that can that can teach the computer for us, um, and so it's it unlocks a lot of doors in, in that respect. So I think uh, you know if we can if we can come together uh, as a as a community to build something that works, maybe it's Rubik's, maybe it's it's something else. Um, but you know if we can if we can sort of bring PHP you know into the into the 21st century with with these tooling with this tooling, I think that'll be a huge win. Well, I was just going to ask, you know, how is everybody, if you are using the library, how are you using it? Because you, you have written them, you know, uh, with, with some certainty how uh, how good they are to be used in, in production. Um, as far as our versioning, um, the the we haven't released a stable version right now because the API, the, the public API was, uh, you know, it was, there were still some things that we were kind of, you know, moving around that would have been breaking changes otherwise. Another, I kind of you know gleaned another question from from what you said, and that is how how to address uh, interpretability, perhaps maybe because uh, you know we're we're talking about models that are not necessarily uh, interpretable. Uh, you know, some of them are are black boxes. For example, if you were going to use um, like a neural network for your project, or if you were going to use um, maybe a you know more flexible. Um, Nonlinear model, it might be harder to sort of derive the uh, the reason for certain predictions. Um, you know, that's that's an area that we're uh, you know we try to address with Rubik's um, uh, interpretability. There are certain models that will output, for for example, uh, uh, the our classification tree or regression tree. The one uh, you can actually dump the the rule sets that are induced through training. There's also ways of measuring the uh, the strength of certain features um, and, and how important they are to the model. Um, we, we have a, an interface for that. It's called the ranks features interface. Which is there a, a way for us to figure out which algorithm is good at which solving which problems? Something like 
maybe maybe you read all those references to implement them, but maybe there is is a place that describes them in in, in, in you know, gives the gives us an overview of what what could be useful for. Yeah, so so that's a great question, um, and I think part of the value of being a, an experienced data scientist is is knowing uh, or having an intuition which algorithms are are going to be, you know, are going to yield the best results. Um, and so, yes, I did make an attempt to to try and steer people in in the direction of certain learning algorithms over others. That's that's just meant to be a rough guide. Um, we have something in the in the machine learning field called the no free lunch theorem, and I and I put that in our documentation at the bottom. But I just want to reiterate that um, because that kind of speaks to to this problem. Uh, the no free lunch theorem states that that averaged over all problems. In other words, imagine the problem space of of, of all problems. You know, uh, uh, trying to detect fake and imaginary things, you know, it's this infinite realm of, of all of all problems. So it's it's very theoretical, but within that space, there there exists no single learner that performs better for all circumstances. I noticed that, for example, uh, that's a bit picky, but I'll be quick. I noticed a problem with it that um, when when our, we have to sort, we have to find similar questions. I mean, the questions are usually one or two sentences, but some are bigger, some describe the same thing in more words and some are shorter. And then the IDF algorithm has skews a bit because it's the longer ones uh, got of incorrect results because they state the same thing, but with more words. So <laughs> we, we have to explore different options, but that's, that's, that's the interesting part of the oh. Thank you. So, so, so just uh, about most, most like this. I just wanted to, to add something, because um, you know that that's an inter that's that's sort of a unique problem. Um, we're we're using the library. We're using machine learning um, to to solve the most like this problem. And for those that are that are not familiar, what what it is is we're we're trying to find a, a document in a database that is most like uh, the document that we're we're showing it. Um, and so one of the ways that I suggested that we could do this is we could build uh, uh, a, a binary spatial tree with the with the database basically and just run a nearest neighbor search <clears throat> because most like this is essentially just the 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 one nearest neighbor of, of uh, uh, a TF IDF encoded document so if you have uh, term frequency inverse document frequency uh, features so in other words you have um, a document encoded as word counts and then you take those word counts and you weight them by their their rarity uh, in the in the document corpus. So this is a, a, a weighting schema. That's what TFIDF is referring to. What's the roadmap and how does it fit into Tiki and um, how is it going to show itself being a front end developer? Where where do I click the button to make it do something interesting? Okay, that's a very very good question. So. Um, for this this project, I see this as really as a long term, a long term thing, right? It's just like it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's going to be a lot of things. Like let's say if we if I say, what does it look like in seven or eight years? It looks like machine learning is all over Tiki, like, and that it's in many places you wouldn't ex you, we won't we don't even know where it will be today, right? I really want it to be deeply embedded. Um, and if we look at it, fundamentally, Tiki is a huge machine to Sorry, manage. Should we, just, should we just explain what Tiki is? Because not yeah. everyone here, unusually, um, will be uh, familiar with the monster. Yeah. So basically, this way I was going to go is Tiki is a is a PHP tool to manage content, but it's been going on since 2002. So it's you know it's 18 years old. There's been hundreds of people that worked on it um, from many, many different organizations. So it's very vast and very diverse. So basically, it's uh, the, the tagline is it's the open source web application with the most built-in features. So it has just about any feature that the people in the community wanted to add since 2002. So somebody needed a forum, they asked, contributed a forum. Somebody needed a poll system. So what it does really, really well is if you need to have 50 to 100 people that collaborate together on data, that's really a, a really, really good sweet spot. So, but this data could be all kinds of different things. It could be wiki pages to, for documentation. 
It could be discussion forums. It could be blogs. It could be just about like all the features imagine that a community or an organization would need. So in the market, what would be similar to that is something like Drupal. Um, now, fundamental, so Drupal has, it, it's a general purpose content management system, which has tons of features. The main difference between Drupal and Tiki is the, the, the development model is in Tiki, everything's integrated in one piece of software and everybody collaborates on the same set of tools. Whereas in Drupal, it'll often be extensions or they call them uh, modules. And then there'll be several thousand, like 15,000 modules. And in the Drupal community, they say, well, if there's two different modules that do something similar, that's just that's just how it is, right? Um, for us, that's just not thinkable. Like if you if someone comes to the community and says the discussion forum in Tiki doesn't work well, we're like, yeah, okay, let's improve it. We have to work with what's there. So what that means is that the Tiki community is very um, is is very uh, structured together, right? It's very uh, we're destined to all really work together and share uh, the same challenges. The way I like to describe a, an estimator in RubixML is uh, just imagine it like a regular old function, um, a function that can either return a class name, a number, as a, is in the case of a, re, of a regressor, uh, a cluster number, or a, or a Boolean, like, for example, if something is an anomaly or not. So at the end of the day, it all boils down to, to, to just a function. It's a special function. It's a function that's trained with data. But if you can imagine where in your application you would put such a function like that, for example, you might want to predict if a, tr if a stock is trending. I don't know. Um, you might want to predict, I don't know, all, all sorts of things. You know, if someone's going to default on their, on their credit, that would be an example of a class. But it, but it really is just a, just a special kind of function. Yeah. So, yeah, we need a little control panel somewhere to tell it what to do. The, the other thing about Tiki, one of the reasons that there's so much stuff in it, so many checkboxes, is one of the rules from the beginning was make it optional. So by default, this would all be switched off and you'd have to go in, probably click advanced, and then you get to see um, the uh, the controls. Now, now, Johnny, keep in mind too that um, there will be two types of, there, there'll be two types of problems that I see uh, with, with Tiki uh, or with Wiki Suite in general. The, the first one would be problems that you kind of know what the question is. Uh, for example, are there any anomalies in our logs? That that's a question that's known up front. Mm -hmm. uh, there might be some some unknown questions. For example, you might have a customer that just has a database, and maybe they have a database of you know credit card customers or or houses or uh, e-commerce customers. Uh, you know, and based on that data set, they're going to have their own set of questions. They're they're going to want to either predict churn or conversion rates or you know all, all sorts of things. And so. So uh, you know, I, I, you can also think about it in 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 terms of two classes of problems: the cl the classes of problems that are known, and those that are that are unknown. And for the unknown, uh, you're going to have to implement a layer. This is sort of uh, you know platformizing, if you will. Um, you know, Tiki uh, mm -hmm. would basically be creating that layer that would allow the customer to to then answer their own questions essentially through their own data set. How do we make it happen? So, so the first step is that uh, Victor will implement the, the minimum viable product, right? Just like something, uh, a really simple use case just to get the library in there. Um, and then we'll just we'll discover project by project. There are a few things on the roadmap. For example, there's a, a project uh, with, with drones. So this would actually bring two things to, to Tiki is uh, with the drone project, uh, it's the, goal, the goal is to have drones that fly near uh, structures. In this case, the first project is a bridge. Take a bunch of pictures and videos, grab all that, and then do some machine learning on that to see, can we detect anything? So for example, are there any repairs that are necessary? And then to take the pictures and the videos year after year and to try to see patterns, right? So right now, the way they do that, they have some some somebody with binoculars looking at a bridge. Imagine this bridge is like three kilometers long. So imagine how you know that's that's not an efficient way of doing it. So instead, have drones capture all that data and then over the time do that. So for that, it, it, we're going to need to add to Tiki like a 3D modeling thing. Then all the pictures that come in the videos, we already can manage that, and then we want to leverage the, uh, the the data. 
So, so that's one example. But you know, will that come before the other projects? I think once we put the infrastructure, we get working together, we're going to discover ways that we didn't even think of. Like, hey, can we do? Can we do that? Can we do that? Mm. Um, then another another example of a project is uh, there's a there's there's a, a Tiki instance where they have a lot of data, um, uh, scanned letters, and there we have we, we they've asked us to do a OCR in it, so optical character recognition. So that's on our to do to to implement that to extract the text from the letters for improving searching. But then the next step is also classification. All these documents were classified manually. But we can't be sure that that manual classification was done, you know, perfectly, right? So it would be nice to run machine learning on that to say, can we detect any any things that look weird? How come this this letter has this type of content or this logo on it? It's classified here, but all the other letters with this logo are classified this other way. Are you sure? Type of thing. My my personal view is that it will be more useful. To be run on data that's that's customer's data. I mean that's generated with trackers. So if we have to build an interface to use Rubik's with, with tracker data, that's that's something maybe that's something that answers your question. Where is where is the button? It will be somewhere around trackers. I mean you you need to to give a data set to to a, to, to a Rubik's algorithm. You can uh, probably select the the transformers you need to do with the data. And then, and then, train your your data set and and see how how it performs on solving actual problems. So, uh, this this is just one idea how we can give uh, our users some some play some playground <laughs> to to try that. Um, but uh, the more I, I'm looking at, at at that, the the less I think that there will be people willing to try it out because you you should really be it's not that easy to start. Uh, oh, it's all good. It's all good. Like just you know, kind of the last hurdle for uh, machine learning to be readily adopted by yes. you know, in mass is just the speed component. So just how would kind of give us a timeline of uh, how you see C array integration into our existing stack. But uh, yeah, no, I I really feel that that's key um, when. I think of you know what is going to uh, make the PHP engineer competitive with the Python data scientist, the Python engineer, and, and it's going to be the ability to to do some of these things that are going to require uh, some you know a lot of compute. Uh, so computer vision, uh, for example, Mark is uh, or I'm, I believe you guys are are entertaining uh, you know the, the bridge project, uh, code name bridge project, which is uh, going to use aerial drone footage. So things like that, um, we're, we're, we're not quite there yet. Um, you know, if you, if you looked at our CIFAR 10 example, which is one of the example projects on, on GitHub, um, we're using a, a multi-layer neural network to do that, which is our most flexible uh, model at the, at the, at the moment. <laughs> um, you answered part of it at the beginning, but I'm just curious why PHP over like something like Python or another like full stack language like that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, well, I mean, Python's already got this stuff, you know. Um, I, I, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want, first of all, I, I love PHP. So so that definitely figures into it. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, P Python, they already have this stuff, you know, we, we, we have ver a very small ecosystem. I think we're just getting started. You know, Rubik's ML is not going to be the last machine learning library. Uh, I, I fully in, intend on there being, you know, a lot more of them as, as we see um, uh, you, you know, more businesses actually getting value out of it. It's not that PHP developers don't like money, uh, or, or owners of PHP businesses don't like money. You know, they, they still, they still like value. They still like delivering value. Um, and so why, why PHP? Well, well, you know, there's, I think there's a market for it. Um, like I said, I love PHP. We don't have the ecosystem. And I think the, really the big question in a lot of people's minds was, uh, was the engineering problem. Is it even possible to to do machine learning in PHP? I would like to to complement this uh, these questions about uh, uh, why to to use PHP. Um, I, I thought I uh, I, I use uh, Python and R uh, language uh, to implement some um, uh, machine learning algorithms 
in real applications in healthcare and industry. I'm curious, are, are there any, you know, is there any quirks with the library? Uh, anything annoying? Anything that, you know, or, or has it been all sunshine and rainbows? No, uh, the, the, the another library that I used before was uh, PHPML. Then uh, some algorithms I uh, implement, uh, basic algorithms, classification, regression. But uh, yeah, but he uh, he's he's happy, so that's good. Yeah, that's great. That's great. I, I'm curious, you know, uh, because I, I I work largely in a vacuum where I'm at. Um, you know, I really appreciate all the all the help that you've been uh, giving us. Uh, you know, here at Rubix, maybe um, maybe one or two feedbacks from the people. How did you find this uh, this format, this call? Uh, what do you guys think? My two cents. Very educational. Uh, I think it broadens our our vocabulary for the newcomers to ML. So nice use of time, I think. So let's see. I mean, it is recorded. We'll see how it goes. And uh, we can always convert it to another format and make it accessible. Um, I think it would it'd be a good asset for the, the Rubik's ML community to see, you know, like, so and we, when we go back uh, five years from now, we can listen to it and say, oh, we, we had it all wrong. We didn't understand at all where we were going. Um, if you were to ask me three months ago, I would have said, I'm, I'm just going to keep programming in my basement. I'm not, my basement, I don't have a basement. My bedroom. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, how how can people help? Um, you know, just just uh, we we have a couple issues up on our GitHub um, that that are you know fairly. Uh, I don't want to say that they're they're uh, low hanging fruit, but uh, they're um, you know they're they're designed for newcomers. We'll we'll call them. Um, so you can you can uh, pick one of those those issues and and uh, just you know start start contributing. Um, I'd say really what we need right now is is people to to kind of spread the word to to let other people know um, that you know I think there's this misconception that you can't do machine learning in PHP. Uh, I think we need to break that misconception. So uh, I think we need you know some some kind of evangelism maybe uh, maybe that, if that's the right word going on. Um, Super. So I guess we can uh, we can conclude on that. Thank you, uh, Andrew. This is great. And uh, at one point, I'm sure we'll do uh, another one. But I think for today, it was a great introduction. So thank you, everybody that participated. And uh, we'll see you all online. So to follow up, so we have a LinkedIn group. Uh, we have the Telegram. Uh, so I guess LinkedIn group is more of a low volume, keep up to date on stuff. And then the Rubik's as uh, the Rubik's room and Telegram, as uh, Johnny said, there's a lot of activity there, and it's going to be even more. So uh, just, uh, yeah, I, I did that as well, muting it. So I just go and check every once in a while, once a day to see all the messages. Um, but thank you very much and see you. you all. See you all online.